Hello again. We are going to have a lot of fun now. We are going to talk about assessment. Oftentimes, assessment gets a bad rap. This is mostly because some people believe it's good to teach to the test and not teach to the individual student. But assessment is our friend if we treat it right. Assessments can be very useful. Teachers can use assessments to understand what students already know and what they have learned in class. There are many types of assessments. We are going to talk about pre-assessments, formative assessments, and summative assessments. Assessments need to be ongoing in order to help guide a teacher's instruction. Let's start by talking about pre-assessments. A pre-assessment isn't what you do right before the assessment. According to Chapman and King, the goal of a pre-assessment is to expose each learner's prior knowledge, skills, interests, and feelings before the information is presented. In other words, the teacher is trying to learn about student needs and strengths so that the instruction can be differentiated. Designing a pre-assessment takes time and planning. A pre-assessment doesn't have to be a formal pretest. It can be a survey, individual conference, or KWL chart. A pre-assessment should be given a while before the actual unit of study. This allows for time to interpret data and differentiate instructional plans. Okay, after the pre-assessment and planning is completed, assessment shouldn't stop. There should be ongoing formative assessments during the learning. Formative assessment is used to ensure that students are actually learning. We need formative assessment in order to guide instruction to meet a learner's needs along the way towards mastery of a concept. For example, formative assessment can identify learners that need additional help before the end of a unit. If Johnny doesn't understand a concept during a unit, then the teacher can identify this misunderstanding and help Johnny. Formative assessments also allow teachers to use flexible grouping strategies, leveled questioning techniques, and adjust assignments to learners' needs. There are a variety of formative assessments a teacher can use. They can be observations, response cards, and even checkpoint quizzes. Finally, the most recognized form of assessment the summative assessment. Summative assessments are given after learning takes place. Summative assessments show what a student has learned throughout the unit of study. This type of assessment allows the teacher to evaluate the effectiveness of the unit. It also identifies which students need interventions in order to achieve mastery. Summative assessments can also come in many forms. A student might have to create a product that is turned in as the summative assessment. It's okay to use a formal post-test, but differentiating the summative assessment is important. The student should be able to show what they have learned through the summative assessment. Depending on the content, a teacher might use rubrics or checklists to assess student learning. The summative assessment might be to produce a music video or create a brochure about the learned content. Assessment is the backbone of differentiated instruction. Teachers must differentiate assessments in order to guide the instruction of the many mixed ability students in one class. Planning good instruction is very difficult to do without assessments. It's like trying to fly an airplane without a navigation system. Or walking aimlessly in the forest without a compass. Assessments guide instruction and ensure that every student learns. After all, student learning is the end goal.